and welcome back to Curated Clean, the podcast. Where, where we, we get, get our hands dirty so you don't have to. We're your hosts. I'm Michelle. I go by Mike. My name is Mandy. And I'm Whitney. Welcome back. This is the second part of a three-part episode series um, of What Curated Clean Is, the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, in the first one, if you haven't gotten a chance to listen to it, I suggest you go back because you'll get to hear the mm -hmm. fabulous backstories of us mm -hmm. on how we got to this place. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to talk about what curating, uh, curated, what clean living means to us, each of us individually, mm -hmm. and how that will affect the podcast and what we talk about and how we talk about things. So yeah. who wants to start on this subject today? What does curating, what does clean living mean to you, Whitney? Um, for me personally, I think, and even over the years, it's changed a bit, but I think for me, clean living really kind of is trying to eat well. I never really ate horribly. I think I just before didn't, I mean, even though I grew up eating organic, I think there was a time there where, you know, through high school and college, I was eating things I shouldn't have been eating. Right. Um, but now I think that's changed. And I know now about different kind of cleaners, you know, how to clean. I just, not that I didn't before, I just didn't care. I think, you know, I was like, this is fine. This produce, I don't need to wash it. I'll just eat this. Um. And with having had Lyme, um, some detox things along the path have helped me clean things up. But I'm definitely out of the three of us. I'm probably still the biggest work in progress, just because. Oh, I don't know. There's about just that. times that I there's things I don't want to give all up. Work in we're all a work in progress. Yeah, but I think everybody can attest to that. I'm trying really hard lately to switch over um, some. I've switched over a lot of my home home cleaning products. I'm still trying very hard to switch over some fragrance things because it's hard to let go. I like everything to smell good. I have oh. two cats, so I like things to smell good. So I like the little air fresheners and, yeah. I mean, aside from like my lotion and my soap and things that I love to smell good. So for me, a big one has been giving up fragrance. Yeah, um, big for me too. I'm still, honestly, even I'm still working on finding a good deodorant that I like. Um, right now, I'm still just using kind of a, a brand name one that's actually for men, but it's just the deodorant. It's not an antiperspirant. So there's no aluminum, but it still has fragrance and some coloring yeah. in steps. it that it shouldn't. So there's baby steps. So and that's kind of where I'm at. We can get into another one about the importance of sweating and why just stopping yes. sweating Maybe a cultural thing, a but it's not idea. really a healthy thing. Well, that's the thing too. I mean, here at Curated Clean, what we're going to do is we're going to just – we're not just going to tell you what you should do. We're going to tell you to why yes. it is important to change – the or pull these toxins from your life um, and then research them yourself yes. and determine if you right. agree or disagree because I right. think there are things and everybody's journey will be different but there are probably things you know that I would focus on more than any listener would focus on or right. you know, either even maybe Michelle saying there's probably things that I'm more concerned about and vice versa you know there are different yeah. things that have happened in all of our lives that we tend to put a little this issue a little bit higher than the other so right. I'm definitely still a work in progress um, but I think for me getting you know, home. I'm trying to really work on, I guess right now for myself personally, trying to still work on the sugar thing. I'm trying right. to weed that out because there's sugar in everything and I like there sugar. There literally <laughs> is sugar in everything. It's hard. It's very hard to just, yeah. I commend That's going to be a whole went, podcast in and of yes. itself, probably a series. <laughs> Yeah, because oh. that one's a hard one. It's everywhere, but I commend Michelle for going cold turkey off of I haven't been able to do that. Um, so I'm working on that, but I think for me, just trying to keep things detox in general, just for some of my personal health things I've been trying mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. I don't always get it right, but I try to get it right the majority of the time. So mm -hmm. I think that that counts for something. So I hope that as we go through this, maybe we can just kind of be um, an encouragement and show how to go. I'm still doing small steps. So I think that's right. something too. Going cold turkey probably isn't the best idea because long term that's not realistic. So mm -hmm. my encouragement to people will be just like myself. Um, I'm taking things in small steps, weeding things out one by one. Um, and sometimes that's all you can do is just a step at a time. So that's right. where I'm at. But I think clean living for me is mostly trying to make sure that I'm keeping my food organic and trying to cut out sugar. Um, now that we've learned more even just these past couple of years, um, just trying to incorporate more of those clean things like with makeup, trying to get fragrance out, trying to get mm -hmm. cleaner makeup. But it's it's still hard for me. I'm using the stuff that I got because I'm like, I just bought this. I don't want to throw it out. So and well, that's, that's the whole thing too. I mean, I, I don't think it's practical yeah, to no. tell someone, let's trash all of this and start Yeah. Start well, it wasn't over. practical for me. No. I mean, I even, there are some people who don't care about their sugar consumption and that's fine. I'm not here to judge. This is, you know, everybody's in their own scenario and their own mm -hmm. steps in life. I don't really care what anybody else does or yeah. wants to do. It, you know, that's their, that's their life. I know that I pulled all my stuff when we cleaned out our pantry. I pulled out all of our things, put yeah. it in a bag, and then asked people, yeah, these are unopened wanted. items. They're still in date. Would right. you like them? And I had yeah. people that said, yes, we will take them. So I, it was for me when I had to get it out of the house because I just couldn't look at it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to just throw it away. That's money. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, and when right. you're going through treatment and you're paying for that out of pocket, everything is money and you yeah. don't want to yeah. just be throwing yes. food away. Well, and, and so there were other yeah. people who, who would eat it and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and the same so thing goes did. for household products. Maybe yeah, you just bought right. a brand new thing of a laundry detergent mm -hmm. right? and it's got fragrance, it's got toxins, Dying. it's got chemicals mm -hmm. and all sorts of things in it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably not the best. Hey, I'm not here to tell you trash that away. and yeah. go buy something new. Use it till it's done, okay? Yep. You know, uh, it took it's taken me years to get my makeup bag cleaned out, yeah. and I still have not found a mascara. I would uh, agree a with clean that. mascara. I'm still looking for uh, you one know, too. <laughs> so that and that's yeah. it might seem like a little thing, but it took me years to change out my, you know, my foundation skincare routine, my foundation, and, yeah. right. my blush, my eyeshadows. And remember how I talked about in the previous podcast? I talked about for me, clean living is kind of a bartering system, right? Um, and I know we haven't gotten to me yet on like what clean living means to me, but as far as what I do in my daily life is, I do barter. I still have my really high end, expensive makeup that is literally mm -hmm. toxicity laden. Um, there are a lot of <laughs> Yeah. ingredients that I yeah. shouldn't have on my True. face, but I prioritize those or maybe deprioritize those to, I'm going to go out for dinner on this, on, on a dinner date. I know I'm only going to be wearing, you know, yeah, this makeup for... for a few hours. Mm -hmm. I put it on, I wear it. I take my selfies and pictures with my husband and then I come home and I shower it all off. I make sure mm -hmm. I get it off. Now that doesn't yeah. mean that we, that I didn't put the toxins on my body. It doesn't mean that my body still doesn't have to detoxify those things, but right. instead of wearing it all day, every day, You're wearing it I'm going to fall back yeah. onto the Nancy slogan. We might just coin that the Nancy slogan of mm -hmm. a little bit of something is better than all of nothing. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, doing a li as best I can, as often as I can is, yeah. is often what I rely on. So I really want to look a certain way. To be mm -hmm. honest, I've switched to quite a few clean makeup brands. Right. Yeah. But they so just I. they don't cover and they don't look quite the same as no. as think, the other things. Yeah. So I think I've come to I found some. We'll get on. We'll get to that. We'll later. get to that. We'll get. To, we've, and yeah. we're still in the testing process of some other brands yeah. too. Right. So we'll, we'll bring those when we when we tackle clean makeup. Who knows how many series that will be, but we'll we'll tackle one yeah. thing at a time. Maybe um, I'd like to start with probably foundation because mm -hmm. you wear that mostly all over your mm -hmm. face all the time. So, yeah. but we'll tackle those when we get there. But I try to prioritize my toxicity levels. So mm -hmm. if I know I'm going to go to a party, and you know I don't even try to do a lot of Zevia even or even alternative sweeteners. Um, sometimes we can get into that later too. It can also affect liver in mm -hmm. in a you know bad way. Yeah. And so, but I know that if I'm going to go to a party and everyone's going to be, you know, like a Christmas party, we just had holidays not that long ago or New Year's. You're going there. There's lots of desserts. There's lots of things to eat. I take a can of Zevia with me um, because that's my go-to drink right now. And I'll drink that. Now, mm -hmm. does that mean I can drink it all day, every day? No, no. but that's my go-to when I really want to eat the cake, but I can't have the cake and I'm, not, I'm choosing not to eat the cake. Right. This is my cake and I'm, and I'm very happy and satiated with that. Mm -hmm. So, well, you guys have talked a lot about, you know, like, like eating and, and that absolutely is part of what I feel clean living is. Uh, so I, how does it differ for you? Well, that's the, that's the funny thing. I mean, food was just always, I think maybe because we grew up on our, on an organic farm, I always took that for granted. Right. So for me, clean living meant a whole mm -hmm. other you know, part of my life. Yeah. And, you know, especially after I had kids too, I started thinking about, wow, this stuff I'm putting on the counter to clean it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Cause they lick everything. Yeah. I mean, it's, they can't yeah. be around this. Oh, and I, I'd pick up the bottle and look at it. And I, I started thinking, this is not safe. Yeah. You know, this is not safe for children when or pets. The, when the warning yeah. label is three times longer than the ingredients label. That's a scary thing, considering yeah. that our children, our t our kids, and our pets are mm -hmm. in ourselves, and ourselves, well, yeah. and ourselves touching yes. it and put, getting it in our mouth. If that if that countertop is not completely dry at that point, whatever yeah. is liquid in there, you just you just touch to your eye, you touch to your face, you touch you, mm -hmm. yeah, everything. So yeah. I, you know, for me, so then I started going down that path of, I need to clean up. You know, I'm putting them in a bathtub that I cleaned with a very toxic, you yeah. know cleanser yeah, yeah, and clean. and then I want them to get clean but their little bodies have just been exposed right. the water's leaching back out those chemicals and they're sitting in a, in mm -hmm. a pool of toxins basically so that started waking me up you know um, and for my own self as well but I, I think when you, when you think about your pets or your kids we tend to put focus on other people yeah. you know um, right. and think more outward and so that was a motivator for me you know maybe right. even more than my own self 
was making sure that my pets and my kids yeah. were safe from these yeah. toxins. And so I started thinking, you know, I need to change this. And that was very daunting for me. I was the person yeah. who had just bought the big old tub of laundry detergent and I didn't want to throw it away. And guess what? Yeah. I didn't. I did my research while I used that one up mm-hmm. to find new, better, safer toxin-free alternatives. And now I feel like I've really come to a place in my life where I can clean my house Mm -hmm. and I know that there's no toxins, but guys, that was a journey. I mean, it took me years. And so we want to help you. That's another thing that we're going to do here on Curated Clean. You're going to have the benefit of our years of research and trial and error. And many, Mm -hmm. many errors, many (laughs) failures. I've tried a lot of like, do it yourself with this. And I was like, that was awful. It didn't work. That that is not clean. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes that's another thing too, um, going forward, Mm -hmm. um, things we can make at home ourselves. Are they better than what you can buy at the store? This company says they're clean, but, um, you know, are they, are they really? Are they really? And then the other reality is sometimes um, I'm a busy mom and the reality is, yes, I could carve out time to make all that stuff at home, but that would mean that, I mean, the time that I do have to, mm-hmm. I mean, I stay at home and work from home yes. and so I'm around my kids a lot, but the reality is when I work from home, my kids are home, but I'm working simultaneously. So do I want to carve out more time away from my kids versus playing with them or doing a project Mm -hmm. with them to be able to make laundry detergent or hand soap or bars of soap when there are some options that are clean, that are good for you, that are safe, that I could just purchase. And that for me, my time versus the money I'm going to pay out on that is worth it in general for me. Time is money. Time is a cost as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Time is money. And so there are some times when that's a possibility and there's some times when it's not a possibility. Mm -hmm. Right. There is no budget for that to purchase outside of the home. Exactly. And, you know, especially, you know, with everything that happened in the year of 2020, there are Mm -hmm. a lot of people whose entire lives have been changed. They work yeah. from home now. Their children are homeschooled. They don't right. even have the option of sending their yeah. child, children back to, right. uh, you know, in school learning. There's a lot of change. Mm-hmm. And yes. um, so, you know, we we don't take it for granted that, you know, many of mm-hmm. you might not have the option yeah. of sitting there and whisking together the borax and the cleaning, you know, solvents mm-hmm. to make I, your own laundry detergent. Right, right. You know, it's just not always going to be practical. Always, yeah. So yeah. we want to give you practical solutions as well. And that, I think, for me, has been part of this journey, too. The, let go of the guilt. Let go of the, the, the shame and the guilt. We're not here to shame anyone no. or guilt anyone. No. If you can't get rid of your deodorant just yet, you just can't stand the thought of sweating. Okay. But maybe we can help you get a cleaner shampoo that doesn't have parabens and sulfates, fragrances, right. and dyes. We're going to get there. Okay. It's, it's a journey. It's yeah. definitely a journey. It's definitely steps. And don't, yeah. don't guilt yourself or think that you have to jump. But like we've said, don't jump all in. You don't have to do yeah. that. Because I, like I said, I'm still, you know, I'm, I've been trying different deodorants for a long time. I'm still using one that isn't great for me, but it's a step down. It doesn't have aluminum in it. I've stepped down right. from that and it's a little bit better right. than the things I was using prior. So well, and it's to, steps. <laughs> to piggyback off of something you had said earlier, you guys both say that you really love fragrance. That mm-hmm. was one of the first things that I cut out when I wanted to lower my toxic load straight after diagnosis was what can I cut out today? Like yeah. literally that mm-hmm. next morning, what can I cut out today that I know will help take off my toxicity load at the end of the day? My equation of what I add mm-hmm. together, my end number at the right. end of the day, what can it be? The first thing I cut out was fragrance. Yeah. Most I'm, people don't even realize that fragrance mm-hmm. is such a toxin though. Yeah. Right, right. I and, certainly didn't. Well, I and, did, yeah, and we forget either. about what, and when I say I cut out fragrance, I mean, I stop, it wasn't just the perfume I put on my skin. It was in hand soaps. Yep. It was in Lotions. laundry detergent. Mm-hmm. It was also Your cleaning in, products. in dryer sheets. Right. All those oh, things. Yes. I mean, yeah. like. The, it's an everything. It is. Mm-hmm. And and as a person who loves the smell of a very specific brand of laundry <laughs> detergent, mm-hmm. that was yes. super sad for me because I love that. I mean, I love the smell of certain things. And what I was going to touch back to and why I kind of segued to fragrance was you know, we talk about emotions that we carry. Our mm-hmm. mom bought us perfume every year for yeah. Christmas. That was the yeah, big, was gift big gift that she got when we, when we became older. That was yeah. it. It was an ornament every year and it was fragrance. Mm-hmm. And so for me, letting go of fragrance that day, I had to kind I had to grieve kind of her grieve, loss yeah. again and grieve that little 
I, I don't know what you want to call that ritual that I did that kind of reminded yeah. me of her. Well, every and not day. only that, but scent. We know yeah. psychologically that fragrance is connected and can memories can trigger and, memories right, more yes. than any other of our senses. So you know something is hmm. we think as simple as saying, "Hey, just get fragrance out of your life." I realize yes. that is a big deal, right? A, a big mm. deal for a lot of mm-hmm. people, exactly. you know. And it's not just as easy as throwing that you know away. And and fragrances, you know, I. I and my husband were both um, really into fragrance, uh, perfumes and colognes. Um, we had a little collection going, honestly. And I would spend quite a bit of money, you know, on a very, of, very nice Speaking about throwing out things that cost a lot of yeah, money. You don't want to you don't, you you don't don't throw, throw those out. things out. Yeah. yeah. And I, so I, I – And I, sometimes you can't get those smells without having mm-hmm. something that is a just a chemical – a random chemical to create that yeah. smell. Mm-hmm. And and I realize that, but one of the big things for me, as far as if we talk about what clean living means to me, I look at it a little, actually kind of a culmination of everything, mm-hmm. just because I went to try to clean everything as quickly as I could, yeah. you know, as fast as I could, as efficiently as I could, while my husband was taking care of our two kids. Now, let me remind you that my, my older child was like two and a half when my other one was born. So, yeah. you know, he had a new baby. I had surgery when, when the second one was three yeah. and a half months old. And I officially got a diagnosis after a lot of misdiagnoses along. Everyone was like, well, yeah. we know it's some sort of cancer. We don't know what it is. That'll be another podcast that we'll talk about. But it wasn't until Christmas of that year that we officially, you know, we're told mm-hmm. we are going to diagnose it ovarian cancer and this is how we're going to look at it. Now, I always say what's written on the paper is not your destiny, so please be encouraged by that. I kind of took mm-hmm. that and threw it out the wayside and said, how can I heal my immune system from the, the bottom up? There was mm-hmm. obviously a hole in my fence, and I needed to mend those yes. fence holes. And genetic testing was part of that. We talked about that in, in the first yes. um, episode, mm-hmm. and we'll talk about that more <laughs> later. But that's what kickstarted mine. So it went from, I had to look at all of it, all aspects of it. I had to look at it from what I'm putting in my body, how often I'm putting things in my body, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what I'm putting on my body. Even, I even cut into light, you know, I, I found out I was melatonin deficient. And so light sensitivity was a big deal for me. I'm a person who loves blue light. I'm a summer person. I can't remember what that's called. Uh, they used to call it um, like winter depression or whatever, but they yeah. call it seasonal. Um, seasonal affective disorder. Yeah, seasonal affective. I think that's what it is. And so that's totally me. I'm a person who I love sunshine. When I get into fall and winter months, I tend to not go into depression, but I lean toward that side like of being sad right. and there's no, you there's know, a lot there's, of people like that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and that also equates to vitamin D deficiency, which mm-hmm. I always have an issue with. And so mm-hmm. I'm constantly supplementing vitamin D and taking extra and monitoring my levels because I tend to borderline on literally nothing. At one point I did a blood work test and it literally showed pretty much nothing, not even measurable, which is horrible. And we can talk about, <laughs> I'll talk about that later too, as to what that meant in my system in my uh, systems, my body that were Mm -hmm. off breaking down bones and some other things to get vitamin D out. And it affected my blood work in certain ways. And we had a way to remedy that very simple, just vitamin D supplementation, Right. but you don't know it until you know it. So I, and all the the things to remember for me is all these diagnoses for me, all this bad stuff (laughs) happened right when I tend to go into that seasonal depression kind of thing that I fight every year. I, I know it's coming. I know that I'm, I'm that kind of person. So I tend to keep lights on longer, keep everything very, very bright, but that affects the circadian rhythms of the Mm -hmm. body. And that Mm -hmm. didn't help me in some of my things. So when I looked at clean living, it wasn't just about the emotions I was carrying, the toxicity I was was putting on my body or in my body or even my household products. Those were all incredibly important, but it also came more, I don't know if you want to call it like existential, where I was also thinking about my prayer life and the time I spent, you know, I don't like calling it religion, but the time I spent with God and, and Mm -hmm. the, the way I, I talked to him and the way I communicated with my family, I also felt very reclusive during that time. So me clean living literally meant putting myself out there more than I wanted to be because I wanted to recluse. And so it was spending time with family when I was too tired. Mm -hmm. It was doing these kinds of things. And clean living before diagnoses wouldn't have been that for me at all. Mm -hmm. It would have been more a traditional sense. And I think that 
think that brings up a good topic of what kind of stigmas come along with clean living, right. you know? I mean, I think a lot of times we think of the granola, mm-hmm. granola, quote unquote, mm-hmm. mom from down the street who's feeding her children bark and, yeah, you know... <laughs> Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. I'm, I mean, you know what I'm talking well, about. It's like I, yeah. my kid's sick, but I'm going to just rub their face in dirt, and it'll all be okay. And we're not talking about that kind of yeah. situational awareness of mm-hmm. just like, Meh, I'm just going to no, do this and, and be okay. And I think there's a there's a really there's a tendency for some people to think that you're jumping on a, a trend train, Mm -hmm. you know, Oh, it's trendy to eat gluten free, but they don't really understand that, you know, I don't care if someone's jumping on it because it seems trendy or not. Yeah. It can reduce their inflammation. Right. And so for reducing inflammation, then we're, we're, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And sometimes the train is beneficial because when, when I first went gluten free and when we went gluten free, Mm -hmm. there were no options to eat out. You ate everything at home. And Mm -hmm. suddenly because it became trendy, which, which people felt better, which is why it became, I think, so popular. Right. And then I think there's a certain level that people get angry. Like if you're not actually celiac or something, then you right. don't have the right to do that. But if you feel better being gluten free, then that's fine. Yeah. Right. Um, I think everybody you're get the sh- benefit of the right. le- yeah. the reduction the of inflammation. Yeah. But without the train, we didn't have options. I didn't right. have options. And now there are and a lot now of people. There's a big search even... for sugar free as well. I think there's a huge discussion coming up that's being pushed yeah. to the forefront about how much sugar is in everything. Right. And people are now looking for sugar-free options. I don't know that they're all the safest options in, in what they're doing, yeah. but I do think that the yeah. dialogue got started and that's important because that can't happen until the dialogue, you yeah. know, it, it opens it comes up a to... lot of options and just getting yeah. the dialogue going because like mm-hmm. you said, we've come a long way. I mean, when you first went gluten-free, we all kind of jumped on the train. There was, I think you could get like, there was maybe a couple brands that had like boxes of cookies Mm-hmm. It was like maybe some pasta. free cookies, maybe pasta well, here and there, and maybe honest, bread. But I didn't even know when I said, oh, I'm going to go gluten-free. I didn't even know what gluten-free meant. I know the first time, and this is another subject I want to cover at some point in the future, going to the grocery store the first time mm-hmm. after you've decided to cut one thing out. <laughs> yes. Because let me just tell you. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, but you can do it, and it doesn't have to be three hours. Because yeah. my first time when I cut out MSG and gluten – my husband and I were literally in the <laughs> aisles at labels for and... like three hours. I yes. mean, I was in tears. We got in the car and I told him, I was like, I can only eat cardboard. What are we going to do? And we, yeah. we lamented the whole way home. And now I yeah. just, I look at it. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about strategies on entering a store and how we've right. learned to navigate that. But we didn't have those skills then because we right. had we never done it before. We yeah. it. So, so we have mm-hmm. ways to circumnavigate, you know, the yeah. issues that we come upon. But the but the reality is clean living can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And it's about conquering goals that you set out that are yes. realistic. And realistic it, goals. Is, it is attainable. I mean, mm-hmm. keep and, realistic goals, but it is attainable. Yes. Because when you look at it, it seems overwhelming. Yeah. But I think, I hope that we can give some, because I think we've all kind of taken it to an attainable level. So hopefully we, we can, can make give it more some, practical. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, kind we need of more get. practical. So does clean living, is it something that just happens or is it something that you have to be more intentional about? Because I feel like it needs to be a little bit more intentional than than we tend to want to work into our lives. Listen, maybe, you know, a century ago, maybe you didn't have to work as hard because mm-hmm. there just wasn't that much being thrown at you. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, maybe... I agree with that. You know, maybe our great, great grandparents didn't have to worry as much. Yeah. I still think they did, but n- maybe not as much. Yeah. But today, from our food to our clothing to our makeup to our household products to the building materials mm-hmm. around us to social media creating mm-hmm. toxicity. To technology. Everything yeah. is extra, I think. Mm-hmm. When you were saying that, yeah. your grandparents, when you yeah. said to our clothing, I thought, wow, you know, clothing was ornate but also very simple as far mm-hmm. as the materials that were used right. because Today, we weren't looking for things to be tight or stretchy or it was just it was pretty, but there was also a lot more utilitarianism Simples, to yes, it more that useful, didn't function but... well in, in your day. There, um, there's always been toxins. Okay. Right, the world is, right. there's always been toxins always, but how many are being thrown at us today is mm-hmm. it's, it's really unfathomable. I mean, yeah. we, we even want to get into, my husband's very in, um, interested in, in EMF, you know, yes. and radiations and, and yep. how our technology, I mean, what we're doing right now, what's all around us, yeah. um, how it's affecting us and how yeah. our bodies have to cope, yeah. you know, clean living is, it's so vast. And I know that that can be overwhelming. 
Um, but we're going to digest it bit by right. bit, and we're just going to take one bite at a time. Yeah. We're digesting it right along with right. our listeners. Mm-hmm. You know, right. every day I feel like I learn something new, mm-hmm. and sometimes um, something that I was just dead set sure was better, healthier. It ends yeah. up not being. Not being. You know? And it, so it's a such yeah. a learning process. And it changes too. Like she said, you find something you think is good and maybe down the road, maybe they've been, you know, bought out by a different company now. And now we, we may have to go back even on some things that we review in the future and go, hey, this was clean, but now we're going back and reviewing it again. And this has changed. So, you know, you may not want to use that now. So it's just, it's an right. ever-changing platform, I think, with clean living. As you Whether get, that's products yeah. or even just on a personal level. I think we all kind of talk about how different experiences maybe triggered something different for us with clean living. So I think that's kind of, it's ever changing, but I hope that we can give you some good points um, and maybe Mm -hmm. obviously give some options and opinions of ourselves, what we think. So, And this, we kind of talked about this being a gradual Mm -hmm. process. I mean, you can do it as quickly as you want or as slowly as you want. I mean, I had to to jump in cold turkey. I had to jump into the the deep end Mm -hmm. of the pool and start swimming. And I struggled and, you know, almost didn't make it out, but I did. Um, but other people can go slower and, mm-hmm. and go in a little bit at a time. Right. Um, and it's about whatever pace you can set and maintain. Mm-hmm. And if you need to take a pause from it, you take a pause and you get back on. I yeah. think the, yeah. the biggest thing that we need, um, to keep encouraging people about is just because you've fallen off the wagon or however you mm-hmm. want to say that, you can always get back on the, sure. you know, the just ride. like anything else, like exercise, yeah. you right. know, it's yeah. the same thing. And I think you need to prioritize, okay? Yes. You need to find out what's important for your life. For me, like I said, I was a mom and I realized, wow, these cleaning products that I'm cleaning my children's bedrooms with or mm-hmm. bathrooms with are incredibly toxic. And I would never want them to touch their skin. And yet it is every time they mm-hmm. touch the counter exactly. or when I put them in the bathtub or when I put them in the sheets that I just yeah, washed, right, you know, with this laundry them. detergent or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So you, you need to prioritize for your life what's what's going on. Maybe you ha- are having a health crisis mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. and you you have to make some choices. Um, you know, maybe you need to go down more of a health route. Um, like you need to do some blood work. Maybe you need to find a practitioner that's, you know, um, that's going to advocate for you. Um, and maybe you need an actual, like there's a physical issue going on and and yeah, it's more physical. And and sometimes Mm -hmm. it can even be when you were talking earlier, I was thinking about, you you know, emotional, we've been through some traumas and that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. which we can elaborate on more, uh, at a later date, but you know, grief and everything at one point mm-hmm. was something that it started out like little bite I can chew. Yeah. I didn't feel like going and talking to a counselor or right. a psychologist straight out the gate. I didn't want to let somebody in in that point. But, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, I went and talked to a friend. And then that friend kind of turned into being able to talk to more people more openly about mm-hmm. it. And then that ended up being me talking to a counselor more often. Mm-hmm. And counseling is something that I greatly encourage to, to listeners and um I enjoy That's counseling. That's part of clean living, too. Yeah. I think it is, too. And for Cleaning me, out your mental state. For mm-hmm. me, it's it's a place where I can literally dump stuff. I know this person knows that I'm going to dump on them a lot of yeah. baggage, and I can leave it right. there and walk away from it. And they mm-hmm. can offer things back to me as well. Yeah. But I think that the the emotional state of this as as well can also be gradual. It can start with the fact mm-hmm. that maybe you thought you'd never talk to somebody about something you know, in your life and you decide I'm going to open up to one person, Mm -hmm. uh, assist, you know, sibling or a parent or move outside of your family or a professional. And if you can't go to a professional and maybe you don't have the money or ability to go to a professional, can you find somebody that you can at least get it off your chest, Mm -hmm. so to stay, you know, so to speak and, and work those ways? Cause that can be very cathartic and cleansing Mm -hmm. as well. Just putting it out in the atmosphere and letting it off of yourself too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely think that instead of I, you, we also can't cookie cutter this and say no. it's cold turkey all in, you know, for everybody, right. or it's a gradual baby step. Some people's baby steps. I know one goal for one person that I was speaking with was they drank lots of soda every mm-hmm. week. I mean, like, let's say it's a big for four a bottles of, of soda a day, mm-hmm. a day. Their goal was to go one day that week with three bottles in one day. So mm-hmm. for the rest of days and what now does I mean, the judgmental side of me wants to say, you should cut it all out right now because I could do that. This person could not. But guess what they did? They got off of soda by deleting one soda a day, one day a week, and it took them weeks, but they got off of it. But they got off? Yeah. 
incredible. It's, goal. it's yeah. incredible. It's, and they, they were successful. You're not going to climb the mountain. You're not going to reach the mountain peak on day right. one. Okay? Well, a lot of things, a lot of times these, whether it's a health crisis or something, however you want to change it, it didn't happen overnight. So right. you can't expect yourself to wake up one day and go, oh, well, I was drinking all this soda and now like tomorrow I'm not going to drink any soda ever again. It's just not, it's not realistic. And I think set yourself up to succeed because I yes. think we can get in it and go, I need to do that's all it. of this at once because I want to get my whole life clean. And while that's a great end goal, you can't expect it to happen overnight. Right. Um, right. right. So we're on this journey with yes. you yeah. 100%. Definitely. And so uh, clean living means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So I guess what we we should end wrap this up mm-hmm. and say we encourage you to think about what clean living what means does it mean to you. What are your yeah. goals? There's you can't no right or start. Wrong way write to them do down. It. Yeah. Literally, get out your journal or a piece yeah. of paper and start writing down what your goals are. Yep. Start a list clean journey, and then think journey. about what crosses your mind more yeah. during a day. Mm-hmm. Is it your children? Is it you? Do you start with you and then it moves on to other things? Do you start it for your kids first and then you know move on to other members right. of your family or friends or your community? However that looks. Right. Um, whether or not you. Not everybody can start a garden right away, you know, but you can start buying organic or you can buy one item organic. I mean, mm-hmm. pick out the level that yeah. you can attain, prioritize, like prioritize I said. Yeah. do it, make your list. But we encourage you to make your list. To think at least of, start. Yeah. Start, start. Yeah. Think about what's important to you, what your goals are, and then we can set up ways to make that realistic and mm-hmm. make that plausible attainable to happen. Attainable. You, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right, right. Well, we appreciate you tuning in with us today. Um, this has been an interesting discussion mm-hmm. on what clean living means to each of us and what it means to you as well. Yes. So we always want to end every time by saying thank you for tuning in. We greatly appreciate you mm-hmm. and be healthy, be well, and God bless you. Bye.